evolution of man is never complete or perfect until and unless one acquires a pure sattvic consciousness. A spiritually evolved personality with an intellectual and logical, intrapersonal, intrapersonal intelligence and compassion for all the living things on earth is the ideally evolved Rishi or the most perfect human being. Just by getting a human birth, evolution of man is not completed. India had several sages who had attained this spiritual perfection. In recent times, Mahatma Gandhi was one such individual who by reaching spiritual zenith imparted his share not only for entire India but for the entire world as a near perfect model of completely evolved homo sapiens. In every individual's life, there is a growing phase before full evolution into a personality, both nature and nurture playing a role in this evolution. My father is an old time congressman of the Gandhi Kamaraj era and I grew up in an atmosphere where discussion of socio-political and economic solutions for India's problems were discussed. Gandhi was a great presence in our home. My mother was the chairman of the project implementing committee of the Nehruvian era for strengthening and developing the blocks, the block development of, of the Andathod area. And we as children participated in all the programs in which our parents were involving. Sarvodaya movement, BSS, old age pension programs, Balawadis, Bhudan movement and many others. My mother had an Amber Chak Charka class in which women of the village participated and my father was the most secular person and he was a model for the village for removal of untouchability in his home. Though it was an orthodox Nair family, any person irrespective of caste, creed and class could come and take food. The entire Hindu, Christian and Muslim community in the area had been his friends and well wishers. And as a small kid, I used to listen to the Harinama Kirtana of my grandmother, who was a staunch Krishna Bhakta, who will be making Swadeshi threads on a takli. My grand uncle, Nalapat Narayana Menon, was a staunch Gantian to the core, and all the female members of the Nalapat family too were Gandhians and followed truth and non-violence and service to society as Pancha Maha Yekna. When I grew up, I naturally imbibed all these qualities which a Gandhian should have. But I didn't imbibe these directly from Gandhi. I imbibed them from my family and my surroundings, my parents, my family members, my staunch stand against liquor, the love and truth, honesty, simple life and high ideals and extreme non-violence and compassion to all beings and even my experiments with Brahmacharya and a little bit of Upavasa all came from my environment plus my genes that is nature and nurture. And because of these tendencies, I have always been fascinated whenever I read Gandhi books. Gandhi's books as well as books on Gandhi. If we read Gandhi in the correct way, even now, India can solve all the problems which, are, which we are facing, especially on the violence, corruption, food insufficiency, lack of employment, Hindu-Muslim and other separatisms, divides other class, creed, separatisms, all these we can actually solve. Time is very precious. Let every citizen of India evolve into an enlightened citizen and save this great land from the tangles of separatisms. But as Gandhi himself said in his introduction to the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, quote, his quote, if I have somewhere deep in me the spirit of dharma and loving devotion to God, I shall be able to kindle that in you. But one cannot light a piece of stone. 
Only those of you who have some oil and wick in them will light their lamp with this matchstick of mine. Only those who have something in them will profit from this discussion. This is true not only for Gandhi but for all of us, every one of us. This is the message that we have to pass on on this martyr day. In 1928, in Young India, Gandhi said, the seven sins of the society are politics without principles, wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, and worship without renunciation of ego. As a doctor, I think these seven things are not sins, but grave diseases which requires prevention as well as cure, healing of all the past wounds of society. And I also feel that Gandhi, as a healer of these diseases, had given solutions throughout his life to cure and prevent these disorders. And therefore, I consider him as a therapeutic university in himself for physical, mental, intellectual and spiritual health of human beings and evolution of humanity into perfect value-based living. After several years of Gandhi's definition of the society's sins or diseases as I call it, when we look back, look around, what is the scenario now? The seven diseases have increased, multiplied in astronomical proportions unless we go back to the Gandhian way of problem solving and nation building and implement them earnestly. Implementation is important. The coming generations will suffer from our mismanagement. So it is our duty, our responsibility. Gandhi's national reconstruction programs included non-violence, truth, abolition of liquor, brahmacharya, cleanliness, both personal and environmental, Food self-sufficiency with proper nutritional requirements for the entire society. Equality of all of us as citizens of India, irrespective of caste, creed, religion, economical and socio-political status. Then simple life and high thinking as an enlightened citizen of the world. Spiritual health which will naturally lead to intellectual, mental, physical health. This natural way of cost-effective health care was holistic and stressed on prevention of diseases, not just on cure of already existing diseases. In this visionary plan of health care, both the national exchequer and the purse of the common man will be safe because of the cost-effectiveness. Then, what is vegetarianism of Gandhi? Gandhi said, an intelligence in an intelligent man's taste depend upon the mind rather than the tongue. Thus, his vegetarianism was both compassionate as well as intellectual. It is not just compassionate, but it is also intellectual. It is the duty of a man to protect all the living races and the environment around for healthy coexistence and survival of all the races of species, not just the fittest, but of all the races of the species. The only practical way for this is vegetarianism. Gandhi learned the emotional side of it from his mother and the intellectual side of it from the Vegetarian Society of England. He explored all its intellectual sides before coming to his own conclusions. Ahimsa or non-violence was not just a religious exercise for ancient India's economy or spirituality. It was also for the cleanliness of the cities, villages, for the cleanliness and uh, non-polluted atmosphere of the streams, the mountains, the forests. All this depended upon certain town planning uh, and certain rules of living, especially by vegetarianism and ahimsa. Ancient town planning, planning or the Nagara Vastu was based on the principle of cleanliness of the city as well. Vegetarianism ensured food sufficiency, survival of all races 
cleanliness in an agrarian society like India. Red meat leads to different types of cancers and to high cholesterol levels and to heart ailments. These major problems are threatening our healthcare system today. And how much state money and individual money is being spent just for prevention and cure of these diseases? The cancers, the cholesterol levels, high cholesterol level associated diseases, heart diseases, all this. Yet, why, why are we not thinking about the solution in a Gandhian way? This is a major question I have been asking every, every day. And I think the nation has to ask this for finding a solution to its problems. Then compare the present scenario in modern cities and villages of India. Hospitals are throwing out human waste. Factories are throwing out chemical waste. Butcher houses are throwing out animal waste. And homes, the kitchen waste. All are located, all these things are located in the center of the town. No? Leather industry is also in the center of the town. So all these lead to pollution of air, water and environment and breed lots of pests and microorganisms, some of them new and resistant to all types of new drugs. Governments are trying in vain to check such large-scale pollution and to protect health by building multi-speciality hospitals which are unapproachable to common man because of its cost. It's, the cost is unapproachable to a common man, to even to the middle class man. Home wastes are also deposited and thrown everywhere by citizens, making the problem more and more graver. <laughs>